light and the burden Turn and tell your neighbor, it was at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled far away. It was there my faith, received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Yes, sir. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burnings of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day are you happy? praise God if you believe Calvary you're happy today hallelujah Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Yes, Lord. Amen. Shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Father, we're so thankful today, Lord, to come to the Lord's Supper. A blessed and privileged people. Amen. To be called and chosen. Amen. And given a faith to believe. Amen. So that we could come to the altar tonight and take of the bread and the wine, Father. Amen, as symbols of our Lord, our communion with Christ in this very day that we live, in this little church here, Lord, where you come down and speak to our hearts. And we're in weakness this afternoon, Lord, as ever. But out of our weakness, your strength is made perfect. Amen. May you change the church today, Lord. Praise God. May you take out everything that offends out of the kingdom today, Father. Pluck up everything you didn't plant, Lord. Praise God, bring forth a church that will make a revival. Praise God that the dynamics can pour out. Hallelujah, that we can have power to live and be like Jesus. Oh God, bless the service, Lord. Meet every need, heal the sick among us. And we'll turn the praise and glory back to thee. We ask the blessings in Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. You love the Lord? Amen. It's not lip service. Is it coming from your heart? Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, musicians. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chapman. Good to hear you behind the pulpit song leading. Amen. A real elder. Stood down through the years. The devil can't wipe the smile off his face. Amen. There's too much victory in here. Amen. So God bless you richly. A testimony from Brother Jimmy. Dear Brother Blewett, greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I would like to testify how the Lord opened my understanding to his message that you preached on the 7th of November, opening the glory plans for the bride's third phase. We ain't waiting for nobody else to do it. The Holy Ghost is doing it. I believe after what the Lord has shown us, shown me, that the message, that, that message was direct inspiration from God. I know that we uh, hear that being said over and over again, but Malachi 4 said that one day the prophecy will become history. I believe the same angel of Revelation 10, 8 through 11, which is the same angel that Joshua met in Joshua chapter 5, 13 through 15. Amen. When he said, are you for us or against us? Which Malachi 4 said was Michael, Jesus Christ, the voice of the archangel. That same angel was standing in the pulpit on Sunday the 7th of November 1999 declaring unto us the breaking of a new season. Amen. I would like to express on the one hand the excitement I feel in my heart and on the other hand the seriousness also that I feel. When you started preaching on the guide as you were talking on the guide, the guide wire, you even said that you didn't mean to speak on this about respecting the servants God sends to us and you spent the first part of the introduction uh, talking on respect just before you actually got into the message itself. And the Lord showed me that the same thing happened with Joshua when he met the captain of the Lord's host. The, he had to show respects to that angel. Even though he was God's anointed, yet he had to have that respects before the angel told him how to take Jericho. And I believe the Holy Spirit, that same angel, was telling us, before we get anything of the glory plans, we have to have respects. 
he requires that same respects because this third phase is holy ground and the bible says that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom of revelation when joshua showed respects then the glory plans was revealed how to take jericho we want to take the dynamics amen but we have to approach with respects on this third phase and listening to the facts that you sent to brother coleman about the uh phone facts because of his health i believe that stemmed from a, a depth of respects that only god can reveal to a person i believe that on the 7th of november that angel was standing there telling the whole church that the book is open as you cried out whilst reading brother king's testimony joshua met him up against jericho hallelujah we meet him on the third phase now you can go and take the book you are in the right place to take that book from the angel step into verse 8 for the third phase many things i don't even know i've said i come back did i preach that like an easter i didn't know i preached on new york in the first message <clears throat> play it back realize i said everything contrary to that is antichrist i said brother Colin, take that bit out please <laughs> amen <laughs> so god bless him he's the uh, Yes, sir. I must have felt the atmosphere felt so strong. I thought I was at home. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so therefore, amen. So I hope that home fire is at home today. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And whether it is or whether it isn't, I'm going to be preaching. Amen. We were hoping the echo would arrive, but it hasn't arrived yet. So therefore, you're going to have a local echo instead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It'll still be Christ. Amen. Echo, echo. Yes, sir. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Place in Christ. Amen. So he's quoting what I said here. Uh, meet him on the third phase. Now you can go and take the book. You're in the right place to take the book from the angel. Step into verse 8 for the third phase. Verses 8 through 11 is the third phase. Spirit. Place in Christ. Brother King, the shout of the king is in the camp. There's your food for the third phase, the opening of the word. Go take that book, the very person of Jesus Christ, end of quote. That voice was speaking, declaring to us uh, the hour and the season in such a perfection that the book is open for us to take it and eat the whole roll. A quote from Seven Live Voices from 1975, Brother Coleman said, The book is open. The book was a seven-sealed book, and Malachi 4 opened the entire book up. But the voice says, this is the season and the time to take the book by faith. Don't ask your fellow minister. Don't ask any man living. I tell you to take the book, I'll reveal the book. All you have to do is eat the book and I'll reveal it to you. This was back in 75. Because this is the eagle age. Amen. Unquote. The same message, quote, and the book is open. The book has been open all these years. But then Revelation 10.8, the voice speaks, the anointing speaks, and tells John, who represents you and I, to go to the angel, take the book out of his hand, take it and eat the book. And another quote from Contending for the Faith, uh, restored back by Malachi 4, 1998, Harrisburg. Now the purpose is to take the little book and eat it, because the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in your church. And he's trying to get you to the word, and the angel was the word. Because we can only have the 700 revival if you go to the angel for the book. Unquote. So I believe, Brother Blewett, as you said, the guide is to guide us to all truth, to the open book. And the word of God is a truth. And the word is Christ. Where does the guide take you? To the word. Thank God for that message, as I do for all. No, I thank God for that message, as I do for all the messages that come forth over the pulpit. I feel a new season is upon us. And I'm so grateful to the Lord that he would let me, as unworthy as I am, to see what he is doing for us on a local level. Seemingly so humble, yet as I listen to that tape over and over, it becomes so powerful. I'm under exceeding great expectation for this season. Truly the angel is an, among us. The manifestation of the Holy Ghost is present. And as we recognize this, his power will be mightily released on the third phase. God richly bless you, Brother Blue, your wife, family. We the Jagadees appreciate you and we are praying for you. Sorry it's so long. God richly bless you. I wasn't sorry, Brother Jimmy. You appreciate Brother Jimmy? <laughs> yes, sir. He's pointing the right way. He's in those tapes day after day after day. So thank you, Brother Jimmy. Now, while you're standing, shall we take our Bibles and turn to St. Luke chapter 15? 
and verses 8 and 9. St. Luke chapter 15, verses 8 and 9. For a message which is on my heart. There are other things on my heart about the glory plans and so forth, but I feel just to put those aside for today with one purpose for today's message. St. Luke chapter 15, <clears throat> verses 8 and 9. Amen. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it? And when she has found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Precious Lord, we've read the Holy Scriptures, a hidden scripture in there, Lord, that contains so much power behind it. Father, may you take over this unworthy vessel, Lord. Amen. May the people hear from you, for that's why they come to church, Lord, that the voice of God could speak to our hearts and that our lives could be changed as a result of you speaking. Man could speak a thousand words, Lord, and it would never mean a thing. But one word from Jesus makes all the difference. So help us today, Father, we pray. And may you bless your people and meet every need, Lord. Amen. To prepare us for this great season now ahead of us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray also for Brother Tim Smith and Sister Rebecca preaching in Brother Pret's church this morning. Lord God, and with Brother Peter Mayer's church together. We ask, Lord, that it was a tremendous meeting, that the people were blessed and transformed, and may you give them journey mercies home. And even while we're standing in the pulpit now, Brother Cronkite was due to preach, amen, in Brother Dalton's church, in the message in America. Father God, breaking in there, Lord, to the children of God that's been held back for so many years. May you use him in a special and a glorious way, dear God, and may the elect hear the voice of God. May there be a great revelation stir through the message. Hallelujah. May they realize, Lord, that this is the message of the hour. Oh, God, bless your servant, we pray, Lord, even now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory. Amen. God, would you bless you. You may be seated. So I've got my sleeves rolled up this afternoon. This is church. It's communion. And it's the second coming of the Lord. And you're in it. Yes, sir. You're in it. Hallelujah. So you don't mind? Amen. You want to be like Jesus? Well, we need some dynamics. And we've got to get ready for the dynamics today. God bless. Amen. You may be seated. And a message Brother Bannon preached, the second coming of the Lord. A tremendous title, Amen. the second coming of the Lord. And yet it was only a short message, less than 20 pages. Amen. And he read a short scripture, the one I just read about the woman losing one coin. And Brother Bannum explains how that that uh, was a headband, was a, like a wedding ring we have today. In those days, they used to have a band around the head with 10 coins in it. So we'll come to that in just a moment. But he read that little scripture, and then he said on page 4, now that may seem like a very odd scripture for the second coming of Christ. But it's speaking of the second coming of Christ. And this great subject that we have here before us now is one of the most vital subjects in the entire Holy Writ. There's nothing so important as the coming of the Lord Jesus. For if he does not come, we have been found false witnesses. Our dead that's in the grave are perished. There is no hope left for us if Jesus doesn't come visibly the second time. Amen. Jesus, when he was approaching it at the first time, in the very shadows of the cross, he spoke very little of his, uh, I'm sorry, of his death, burial, and resurrection. He spoke more on his second coming than, on, than he did on his death, burial, and resurrection. So in the light of that, it must be a very important subject. In the Old Testament, there is many more uh, times, more scriptures pertaining to the second coming of Christ than there was to the first coming of Christ. Everything to the human race, after the atonement has been made, rests solemnly upon the second coming of the Lord. You realize how important you are? Because you're connected to the second coming. We are living in the very shadows of his second coming. 
To my way of seeing it by the light of the scripture, there is not one hope left for the church outside of the second coming of the Lord. The world is in wild, pandemoniac condition. That means demons everywhere. Pandemoniac condition. Has got completely out of control of every man-made organization in the world. Kings cannot hold their subjects no more. You see on the newspapers, there was a newspaper with uh, Prince William's face and with arrogant written across the top. Because that newspaper, no doubt, had said he shouldn't go fox hunting. And he ignored them, went fox hunting a second time, so they call him arrogant. Because they think they rule the country, the newspapers. Amen. And they've got a hold on the country through the medias and things. There's no respects for anything uh, in, in position anymore. <clears throat> Kings cannot hold their subjects no more. Neither can dictators hold their subjects anymore. Democracy cannot hold its subjects anymore. And there is no hope left but the second coming of the Lord Jesus. And it's now one of the most horrible times for the unbeliever, the sinner, that he has ever witnessed because the doom time is close at hand. And it's the most blessed time for the believer for his redemption is at hand. There's two factions in the earth tonight, the believer and the unbeliever. The one the Lord is coming to receive and the one the Lord is coming to condemn. At his appearing, he will bless one and he will curse the other at his appearing. Amen. You find in denominations, everybody preaches a merciful God. He loves everybody. Brother Bannon said he does not. He is a God of judgment. If you do wrong, you're going to get stripes. Whether you're forgiven or whether you're not forgiven, you're still going to get stripes. Is that right? For God is not mocked. What a man sows, he shall reap. Amen. You, make a, you do something wrong, you'll pay for it. And now I'm preaching for a house cleaning time. My title today, house cleaning time. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So if you do wrong, you'll pay for it. But the blood keeps you saved. Hallelujah. You cannot lose your salvation. Amen. But if we're looking for dynamics, we want to stay away from everything. That'll block this church. That's why I'm preaching this way today. You may be seated. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now let's look at this scripture now that Brother Branham took. Today, if a woman is married, she should wear a wedding ring as a sign that she's married. That's to keep other men from having anything to do with her. They look and they see she's a married woman. Now in those days, they didn't have wedding rings. They have a tablet. They call it a tablet. They put on their head. I was blessed to see the Sunday school last Sunday. They were all making these tablets around with uh, coins hanging around. Right in the heart of the inspiration. These little children are being raised up. And as they get to the age, they're being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we thank God for Sister Liz and all she's doing for the young children. Amen. I've got something to say to young children in a little while. I'm preaching to everybody today. So they call it a tablet. So we wear wedding rings, but the wives in those days, they wore a tablet, which was a band around the head with coins in it. And that was a sign that they were a married woman. No man was to fool with them. No boys was to flirt with them. They were married. Each one of those coins, he says, if we only had time, <clears throat> I could tell you what each one of those coins meant. It was placed in there, and each coin meant a certain virtue of that woman. The first, meaning her love to her husband. Second, her pledge of virtue to live clean for him. And the third and the fourth, on up to the ninth and the tenth. Now, if you want to look it up, read it in Gal Galatians 5. You'll find out that the woman represented the church. And the church is an espoused wife to Christ. And the tablet that the church is supposed to wear is found in Galatians 5, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. When Jesus comes, we must have all those coins in our tablet. If one's missing, there's trouble. Amen. Peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, gentleness, patience. That is the tablet that's supposed to be worn in the church. Brotherly love, kindness, fellowship. And this woman, <clears throat> woman it must have been along about dark that she realized that she had lost one of those coins. Oh, if there was ever a time that the church ought to take inventory to find out if we've got all the coins on, it should be now. 
Brother Branham is now. We're taking inventory tonight to make sure, amen, if those coins are there or if we've got some coins to find. Amen. It's getting dark. The very haunts and clouds of destroying civilization is hanging over the earth. Sin and debauchery on every hand. We are living in a tremendous time when there is a wickedness. People who go to church just for a sham. I'm not preaching today on the world. I'm looking for the church member. The guy that comes in this church for a sham. Amen. People who go to church to try to hide from their meanness. People who go to church and profess Christianity and live like the rest of the world. Drinking, smoking, gambling. Women immorally dressed. Wearing clothes that they oughtn't to wear in their dressing room. Out on the streets before public. And brotherly love is a thing that's passing, almost. We have not lost one coin, but we've lost practically every one of them. That's this church. I'm not talking about some Pentecostal lodge down the road, or some message church, or some dead thunders church. I'm preaching to this church here. We've lost practically every one of those coins. Amen. Yes, sir. You've got to know you've lost it before you can find it. God bless you. You may be seated. And it was getting night. And remember, her husband would return. And if he found her with one of those coins out, it showed that she had been marked a harlot. And if she had been defiled, amen. If she'd been defiled or defiled herself in any way, and it was seen by the people, they brought her before the priest and brought witness that she had been found such. And the priest, seeing that she was a married woman, took the coin out of her tablet that she had been doing wrong by. If she had marred her virtue, they took that out. If she had been flirting, showing that she wasn't true to her husband, they took out that one. Whatever it was, they took it out. And when her husband returned, he found that she had been marked. And he would divorce her immediately and have nothing to do with such a woman. He did not want such a woman. So it is, so it was getting along towards dark, when she realized that she had lost something, time for her husband to come, and it's getting late. The church better be examining themselves by the word of God, our purity, our loyalty, our devotion. We've become tattlers, tail bearers, cigarette smokers, backbiters, painted up Jezebels, everything in the calendar that the rest of the world does. The Christian church is associating in those things today till you can't hardly tell the one from the other. Amen. That's what I'm against. Amen. If out there they cannot tell the difference between you and the world, I'm preaching on you today. Amen. Amen. A Christian is different. They speak different. They think different. They believe different. They act different. Amen. They dress different. They are different. You are not of the world. So we're not going to act like the world. We're not going to compromise with the world. We're not going to get the world in here. But the world has to go out. And if you're in the world, you've got to get into Christ or go out with the world. But the world's going out. Amen, Brother Shepherd Prince. Hallelujah. There's no room for the world in the house of God. God is warning you now while there's an opportunity. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a warning call to the local Christian assembly. Get away from the world. Get away from the edge of the cliff. Get away from temptation. Get away from evil doings. Don't be like the world. The bridegroom cometh. Glory. Amen. We've had revelations. We've had bubble dancing. We've had emotion. Amen. But now we're going to have a revival. Amen. Would you be happy after all we've been through to go ahead and go to the grave and say I was a Christian? All we've been building up towards, all we've been preaching for, and then it never happened? Why, our life would be in vain. It would be wasted. We're preaching for something to take place. We're looking for the final great revival that is so powerful that the graves shake loose. That makes you so much like God. Till it's thus saith the Lord when you open your mouth. 
Amen. That's the church he's coming for. All ten coins in place. Hallelujah. I don't care what your age is. If you're young, old, a little child. All ten coins. Glory. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. God bless you. The church had better be examining himself by the word of God. Not by your own standards or whatever. Amen. By God's word. Yeah. Our purity, our loyalty, our devotion. Amen. He says, the Christian church is so stating in the things of the world today till you can't hardly tell one from the other. Yeah. It's time we took inventory. Yeah. It's getting late. Yeah. And it was so late till she had to light a candle. She got a candle, and not only did she get a candle, but she got a broom, and she went to house cleaning. Oh my. Amen. She got past the worst part was to actually get house cleaning. Once she was in the spirit of it, fine. We just had to break out of the slowfulness and to get change in our lives. But once she was in the mood, praise God, the doors open, the windows open. Amen. She got a broom. She pulled out the wardrobes. She was looking for something. Hallelujah. And when this church gets in the spirit of house cleaning, when you make up your mind today, hallelujah, you're tired of being an average Christian. You're tired of being a halfway Christian. Hallelujah, what a house cleaning time. You want to feel the power of God. You want to hear the voice of God. You want to know the spirit of God. Burning in your heart. Praise God. You want to know when you go out into the world, that anointing's upon you, praise God. And all the devils in London cannot break that anointing. Pray you speak, amen, it comes to pass. We want real Christians. Real Christians. Hallelujah. Praise our God. God bless you. You may be seated. She got a broom and she went to house cleaning. Oh brother, if there was ever a need of a time of a lighting of a candle, the sending forth of the Holy Ghost light, the Holy Ghost back into the church. Not so much for emotion, not for some fantastics, not for some emotional workup, not for a jump for joy, but for a heart searching experience when men and women get right with God. Right, we're at the end time. That's what we're preaching for now. I love to see you happy. I love to see you jump for joy, but what good it will, would it do you if you never get that house cleaning, heart searching, back to Pentecost kind of Holy Ghost upon you? Amen. You'll never know the joy of Christ, the love of God, till you get that kind of cleaning out. Praise God, that genuine experience that puts you and Christ as persons together. Oh my. And she lit a candle to give her light. And brother, every little candle in here ought to be lit tonight. Not only that, but she got the broom. And the neighbors could see the dust flying. Amen. Every one of us in here, may we have such a house cleaning time. So it's evident to everybody around us. They hear you praying in your room. They see the pile of old videos that's out on the dustbin. Amen. All the magazines that you kicked out. Because if an angel came into your house, you would be trying to hide those things. Put your house in order to where if an angel came in there, you would praise God have nothing to hide. Get the house clean and get your heart clean. Hallelujah, because this is the time when the same angel that sat on Peter's heart will be in this church. Hallelujah, sin will not, will not be able to hide in here. But the Holy Ghost will get a hold of it and call it out. Amen. That's why I'm preaching this way today. I got a hold of some sin. Hallelujah. They're lucky they're not here today. I might have called their names. So when they come back, I'll preach it again. This church is going to be clean. Hallelujah. No demon's going to stop our dynamics. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Shout. Amen. We need this. That is a short message because we're going to take the Lord's Supper but I pray that you feel so scoured out that every one of us will want to rededicate our hearts in a few minutes time 
But before you do that, just open up your heart and let the word come in. Amen. You may be seated with your open hearts. Not only that, but she got a broom. And the neighbors could see the dust flying. She had a real house cleaning time. For her husband was about to come. And if he caught her with that one coin out, she was a harlot. Brother, we, the church of the living God, in these great hours that we're now living, it behooves us to check up, go before God, light the candle of the word of the gospel, and examine ourselves and find out if we're not falling short. Especially when we see all these things coming. We're at the end time. The coming of Christ is at hand. There's not another hope in the world for the church. And look, the church is lollying. The church has no conscience anymore. You can hardly wake them up. The Bible said they would be in that condition. Amen. Where they would say, Lo, our Lord delays his coming. And they'll be devouring and biting one another. Amen. So forth, fighting around, sending faxes, all that. It has to be there. It's just exactly that hour. Everything's ready. The pages is turned. As it was like that, it's ready. The coming of the Lord. The Lutheran church lost her light. The Methodist church lost her light. The Baptist church lost her light. Pentecost lost her light. Every light seems to be gone. The Pentecostal people, the holiness people is acting just like the Methodist. The Methodist is acting like the Baptist. The Baptist is acting like the Lutheran. Amen. The Lutheran is acting like the Catholic. You could bring that right into the message. Amen. And it's all gone to one big conglomeration of sin. That's right. <clears throat> We're in the end time. The coming of the Lord. Now she, she is a church. She had a house cleaning time. She scrubbed the floors. She swept the walls. She took down the cobwebs. She kept on until she found what she had lost. Does that, do you know what that means? That means this kind of preaching won't stop until we've found the thing we lost. Amen. Anywhere there's sin, we're going to be attacking sin as hard as we can by the word of God until, until we found that same penny that the early church had. Amen. So if you don't like it, praise God, fly away. Amen. If you like it, hold on and then we'll fly away. Oh, glory. You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. She swept the walls, took down the cobwebs, kept on until she found what she had lost. And when she did, she called her little sister churches to come now. I don't care if you're a Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian. Come. Let us rejoice together. When that time come, when the church finds its brotherly love, when the church finds its holy decency, when the church finds its place in Christ, it will call to the other members of the body. Come and rejoice with us. God wants the church to love him. The second coming of the Lord. That two verses in the Bible. That house cleaning time was a special revelation in the coming of the Lord. And if you're in the spirit of the coming of the Lord, that revelation will become a reality. Brotherly kindness will become an experience. Holy decency will become a live life. Placing Christ will become an adoption, adoption, adoption. Hallelujah. She is a church made up of individuals with the same revelation, the same passion. God be praised. Amen. So I'm calling you today to a deeper, closer walk with God. Amen. If you want more of God, you've got to make room for him. You've got to kick out some of the junk so that more of Christ can come in. So I'm not preaching your faith today. Amen. I'm digging a hole so more can come in. Just a closer walk with thee. Is that your prayer? You've got to be a real Christian now. You can't play games anymore and come to church to feel good. And as the musicians play and the anointing sweeps out, feel so nice. But what's down in your heart? What are you really here for? I hope you're here for the right purpose. Because if you're not, you're my enemy blocking my promise. 
Hallelujah. You're going to get in or get out. I'm preaching for you to come in. But I'm preaching for sin to get out. Make up your mind. Amen. Church members are fed Bolton. Praise God forbidden. I'm Fox Frey Holton. No entry. Amen. God be praised. God bless you. You may be seated. In the message, watching his star. Brother Brown says, And for myself, I'm expecting something to happen. It is written, When the people that are called by my name shall assemble themselves together and pray, then I will hear from heaven. And I've been praying today, and I know that others have been praying. And I want to thank the church for those prayer meetings. Amen. And they are really uh, fulfilling this quote here. Because when we begin to pray, God will hear. Amen. We have to get God's attention. I can't clean the church. You can't clean the church. The Holy Ghost will perfect the church. But we've got to get his attention. Amen. We've got to preach his promises. Then he's duty bound to come behind and bring it to pass. This is his doing. Amen. You just attract his attention. You pray and cry out to God, knocking on the door. He'll answer. If a wicked judge will answer, how much more a righteous father in heaven is going to send us a revival that he wants to give you. Amen. He sent Malachi 4 because he wants to give you this revival. Amen. But it's only for the bride. His wife has made herself ready. You may be seated. I've been praying today and I know that others have been praying and I'm expecting something to happen. There may be things happen will go right over the head of the people. Many who are not ordained to life will never be able to see it. When Jesus came, there were tens of thousands, yes, millions, looking for him to come. And he just revealed himself to a little handful. See, it's those who are looking for him, looking for something. Those who have a pulsation in their heart beating, waiting, longing for something to happen. It's those who believe it'll happen and is waiting for the event. That's who Jesus will come for, for those who love his appearing. If you love anybody and you're expecting them to appear, you're making every preparation for it. That's the way the church should be tonight. Making every preparation for the coming of the Lord. Watching every signpost. What's a signpost? It tells you how far you've got to go. Amen. Whether you see the wave, that's a signpost. The church is watching those signposts. And when you see God do something, rejoice. Because it's pointing to his coming. Amen. We're down to the last signpost now. He could appear before morning. Church of the living God, dynamics can come any day now. Amen. When the last unbelief gets out the way, it'll be here. Glory. God bless you. You may be seated. I was talking with the shepherd prince on the phone just before coming here. And he spoke to me about Abraham and Lot. And I felt like saying it back to the church. I don't know, I heard his anointed praying as I was coming around the building. I don't know if he mentioned it then. But Abraham said to Lot, choose which way you're going to go. If you go that way, I'll go this way. If you go that way, I'll go this way. And Abraham chose to go that way. He chose, the Bible says, he set his tent towards Sodom. And Brother Shepherd Prince made the observation, it wasn't long before he was right in Sodom. It started with him just setting his tent towards Sodom. Amen. And by and by he was in there, so entrenched in there, that when the angels came to get him out, they had to literally physically get his hand and pull him out before judgment struck. Amen. But it all began way back when he set his tent the wrong way. Amen. Can you hear me, London? Amen. Amen. Don't set your tent the wrong way. Amen. Abraham removed a cross to the plains of Mamre and that was near in Hebron that was in the Canaan's land he said his tent another way amen and your tent is your body that's what's going to veil God and he had his tent facing another way and one day around about noon on a hot day here come three men walking amen Elohim Michael and Gabriel come walking down a dusty road to give a promise Hallelujah, I will visit you with dynamics. Amen, I'm talking to every individual in here. 
Amen. Which way are you setting your tent? Which way have you pitched your tent? Which way are you facing today? Amen. Maybe I'm only preaching on one person. I hope it's only one. Amen. But I'm exhorting you today. Turn your tent, praise God, toward Hebron. Amen. Temptation comes when you start off facing the wrong way. Don't fall into temptation. Amen. It's your job not to fall into temptation. Stay away. Stay away. Stay away from Satan's territory. Can you hear me? Amen, young person. Stay away from Satan's territory. He's got a trap set for you. He wants to put you in a web and pull you down and tie you up. Glory to God. But there's some sons of God praying for you. Mommy and daddy's praying for you. Hallelujah. The voice of the archangel is on the job. Hallelujah. If the devil gets you in the net, the sword is out. Praise God to chop you free. Amen. But don't lose an opportunity now. Give God 100%. Find out what it is to go into the full blessings of God. Search for him day and night. Seek his face while he may be found. There's coming a day when he cannot be found anymore except by those who've had him already. If you've never been saved in this church, it's time to get born again. It's time to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Church of the living God, we've got to get ready. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back for his bride. We've got to get all those virtues in us. Amen. Don't let any unbelief in here. Stop the promise. I won't be long with you. Amen. I'm over halfway. You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. The time is at hand. And Christian friend, I believe we're living in the end time now. When all these things that was written in the Bible, it's time now for all these things to come to pass. Amen. Elohim, Michael, Gabriel, all the promises to the bride, all the promises, everything. In the Old Testament, they all happened in rapid succession at the end. More was fulfilled in those last few years. And so is it in the second coming when there were so many more prophecies. Rapidly everything gets fulfilled now. And, in the, and Brother Brown said, the time came for Pentecost to come. That must also be fulfilled. They were gathered in the upper room. They were not discussing their religion. They were with one accord and one place. And the time came. That's why I'm preaching it now. If you read Acts chapter 2 verse 1, it says they were all in one place. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. It said two things. Number one, they were in one accord. The people were ready. Number two, the day of Pentecost fully came. It was the 50th day, the Jubilee. It was the appointed time. And the reason I'm screaming out this kind of message now is because the time has come. Amen. The ministry of Christ has moved to a spot now where it's ready for the dynamics on the bride. We're living right now in that time. What about the people? It took God 10 more days to get them ready after Jesus went up in a cloud. After he waved goodbye, 10 more days were needed to fulfill the conditions of one accord, one place, praise God, and the appointed time. Yeah. We're right on the edge of it. Oh my. God be praised. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. So, which way have you pitched your tent? Amen. Now, I mentioned this quote Wednesday night, expectation. A minister cannot bring a revival. There's no preacher can bring a revival. He doesn't pack it with him. The only thing he can do is just be loyal to God and his word. And the revival has to come by the people. In your home. In your life. That's why I'm preaching this way. Amen. We've been loyal to the inspiration. We've stayed with the word. But now we're looking for something called revival. Hey, you want a revival? You're tired of just making it? But the man said he's tired of preaching to tired people. Amen. Always under pressure, always under stress. Tired all the time. Aren't you tired of being tired? Don't you want a revival? Well, if you put all your heart into it, you're going to get it. If you set everything else for this revival, it'll be here. 
And if you don't, the revival will still be here, but you won't. Amen. So I'm crying out to you today. Shut the world off. Be a real Christian. 100% dedicated to Christ. You'll see what will take place. Amen. What is a revival? You may be seated. Now a revival isn't adding new members to the church. It's reviving what we've already got. Just this precious group here. You're a beautiful church. You're a lovely group. But we want a revival of you. <clears throat> and how can there be a revival if there were no seeds sown? Because that's what gets revived in you. Amen. The, the seed in you comes alive. Yeah, in your womb, spiritual womb, is God himself. As Brother Ovid said, like the word when it's a Mary, amen, a seed, a cell, kept on multiplying. And that word is in you now, in your foundation. But it's just laying there, dormant, waiting for the promise of dynamics. It didn't come to Lot. It came to Abraham and Sarah. Pitch your tent the right way. To be visited by quickening power. You're going to have that baby. The latter rain's fixing to fall. Pitch your tent towards the plains of memory. Get in Christ. Be in Christ every day. Be in the Bible. Listen to the tapes. Play the videos. Whatever. Go through your house. What's wrong in there? Search your heart. What are your motives? What are you trying to get away with? Get it out. Praise God. Don't come in on the thin end of the wedge. Come all the way. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where will the ungodly church members appear? Oh my. I'm going to get going in a minute, brother. A few quotes to background, then I'm pulling out my mafia double uh, barrel machine gun. Glory to God, demons look out. Hallelujah. Then we'll take the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Amen. So I'm not busting anybody. I'm busting demons. Amen. You're the righteous. But you're having trouble from the devil. I'm having trouble from the devil. And I'm tired of it. You tired of it? He plagues you every day. Time to become invincible. Time to become omnipotent. Time to get some dynamics to our mechanics. Some church somewhere must add it. Hallelujah. Okay. It won't come any other way, but justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. You can't break that. Who's willing to sanctify some more? Amen. Me too. Okay, let's sanctify some more. You may be seated. So revive means revive what we've already got. To revive means to bring back. We're going back. You don't even know what you're going to be revived to. Because you've forgotten what you were. But hold on for the, the dynamics. It'll unfold day by day. Okay, so the minister can't bring a revival. But here's what he can do. At Kadesh Barnea, the prophet said, What we need in this hour is a man to challenge the promise before the people. That's what I'm doing. God promised pouring out of a Pentecostal blessing in the last days. I mean a real Pentecostal pour out. It's a promise. But I'm challenging it before you. Can we do it? Could it really happen? A, 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 another Pentecost in a little church? Amen. Are there enough people in here to believe that it's going to happen here? That we can unite together? Day after day after day, fight our way into the dynamics? When I was ordained for the Coleman said, you've got to fight your way into the dynamic part. He said they fought in Revelation 10 verses 1 to 7 with the revelation. Now you've got to fight your way into the dynamics. So time to chop them Philistines, praise God, and slay them, amen, and take the promised land of the Holy Ghost. God bless you. You may be seated. I'm in a real Pentecost. And it's time for it to come. Another Kadesh Barnea has arrived. Yes, sir. They said, we can well do it. Sure we can. What was it? Those cowardly church members was looking to what they could see with their eyes. 
But Caleb and Joshua was looking to God's promise. I don't care how much opposition they had, how big the giants looked, how big the fences looked, they were looking to God's promise. And every man and woman tonight that wants to go on with God, don't pay any attention to what the world says. Whether we can or whether we can't, God promised it, that settles it, God said so. It's not a question of whether the dynamics are coming. The question is, which way have you pitched your tent? That's the question. The dynamics are coming. God promised it. God said so. But he came to Sarah. And Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt. Uh, that's the Bible. As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be. When the Son of Man is revealed in Kentucky skins. So here we are. We're right at that junction. You may be seated. Recognizing your day. See how perfect the scripture is. A day that won't be called day or night. Fruit cannot ripen unless the sun ripens it. No matter how much you preach, whatever you do, it cannot be ripened. It cannot be manifested. It cannot be vindicated. Only by him who said, I am the light of the world, the word. Now listen to Brother Branham. So there has to come forth a power the Holy Spirit himself to ripen or to vindicate or to prove or to make manifest that what's predicted would happen in this day. So the word is in you. I can't bring it alive. You can't bring it alive. He said the only way there must come forth a power to manifest what he's spoken. It's got to happen. There's no other way for you to be like Jesus unless from somewhere comes power. To ripen that seed. To turn it into the word made flesh. Hallelujah. And then here's a promise. The evening light produces that. What is evening light? Seven thunders. Joseph perfection. The capstone word. Preach it. It will produce power. It will release it. Oh, Brother Man says, what a time. Amen. So it's coming. Amen. It's been preached. It's got to fall. But which way have you pitched your tent? Yes, sir. The dynamics is coming to receive the believer and to condemn the unbeliever. Question for you. What killed Ananias and Sapphira? The dynamics. You may be seated. Hallelujah. The dynamics is hanging over us tonight in the message law having a shadow thank you brother Kieran for digging out these two quotes you can watch it when the Holy Spirit comes in a meeting and presses the word the people don't know how to receive it if that channel was open the Holy Ghost would run right to it just as quick it's like water seeping its way through a crack in the dirt amen you believe that and in confirmation of the commission you say well I received the Holy Ghost he said, oh, there's just, the whole heavens is full of it. See, God is just trying. Like if it was all the whole heavens was a great big stand, standpipe, and you had one little crack, the water will try to force itself out. That's the way the Holy Spirit is trying to force itself into you. Like that, like that, trying to get you to believe it. I know that's the truth. So all the power of the Holy Ghost is stacked up like a pressure as if it went right up into heaven and it's pushing down on us Amen. trying to find cracks to push through and flood out it's there now while I'm speaking to you the dynamics has always been ready but it's time for this church to get ready for the dynamics when you do the crack will open up and there'll be a great gusher a, whoosh, a sound like a rushing and a mighty wind will fill the church if we can just get that crack open, something's holding it back. That's our job is to find out what's holding it back. That's why I'm preaching this way today. Amen. Any unbelief, any sin has got to go. Amen. If there's five people left, that crack will open up. All in one accord. The day of Pentecost fully here. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Five people will shake the whole nation. Amen. It'll go across the world overnight. Amen. The whole message will know about it within 24 hours. If we can just narrow down to a group of people that will believe it. Hallelujah. We've had church. We've had wonderful times. Amen. But Brother Brown said we've come to another phase. Let us go on to perfection. That's the stage we're at. You may be seated. Amen. So we're almost there. The time is here. Something we've got to get out the way before it can release into the church. We'll do it. But you've got to knock first. Seek us. Pray. If my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and don't get puffed up and think they're a special church. If they can know they're no good. If they can know, pray is amazing grace. If God can knock out the arrogance and the pride out of every one of our hearts. Amen. And know we are worthless. If my people will humble themselves and pray, I will answer from heaven. And in the time of dynamics, if they'll ask for dynamics, I'll send them dynamics. Amen. But may God knock the stuffing out of us. <laughs> Bang against the wall and fall down. Praise God. And know you're zero. That's where you meet him. Zero. Big fat zero. That's where you find Christ. Because he's humble. He's lowly. He's meek. And when we start to get puffed up and think we're way up here, you've left him behind down at zero. But oh, God has a way of bringing us back down again. Have you noticed when you start to run away and think you're making it and think you're somebody? Hallelujah. All of a sudden smash. Praise God. Down you go. And there down on the ground is Jesus ready to pick you up and bandage you up and comfort your heart and pour some balm onto you make you feel good again oh it's good at zero if we could just stay there if we could just know we're nothing oh what a sweet feeling that is so don't get upset if you get rebuked and chastened it's bringing you back to zero where Jesus is so that you can be added to amen you may be seated one more little quote here. Infallibility of God's word. But friends, I'm telling you, with your love to believe what I've told you to be the truth, Brother Bram is saying to the people in front of him, if I could only get you over one little thread, you'd see one of the most glorious things happen. There would be another day of Pentecost right here. He's a prophet. I'm echoing it back. If I could only get this church over one little thread. So it's not some massive thing in the way. But he said just one little thread. We're going to see the dynamics. The most glorious outpouring. If I could only see, he said. If you'd only see. Oh, if I could live like this. Because Brother Bam is speaking out of such an anointing. He said, if I could stay like this. If this what's on me now. Amen. What's present now? He's just breaking from one dimension to another. He's here. I can prove it. Oh, this is the condition we're coming to. You're going to be so anointed. Amen. The world will not have any power over you. But we've just got to get that to drop from up there down here. Got to pull that thread out the way. Whatever it is holding it back, we're looking for it. We're praying. Why has God revealed it? Because he's going to take it out the way. But he's got to move you to do it. I know this kind of message doesn't produce faith, but it produces changed lives. It'll produce a revival. We are building. Amen. We're on our road. I'm trying to pull you out of the mouth of the enemy into a glorious liberty of the sons and daughters of God. Amen. Hallelujah. God be praised. And I'm not going to keep you long. Because we're all tired. But wait till that quickening power hits your 16 elements. Amen. We won't be able to close those doors all night long. So it won't be long, beloved church. We're on the brink of it today. Okay, you may be seated. So what is this thread of unbelief that we have got to get over? Church, we must find it. It's house cleaning time. 
The bridegroom is coming. He's almost here. There's no time to waste. Where is that coin? He's already appearing. Heaven has gone silent. He's left heaven. He's coming back, coming back. The bridegroom's coming. Coming for a woman that must have all coins in position. He's coming with a shout. The shout has been done. He's coming with the voice of the archangel. The voice of the archangel has been done. I hope that shakes you, praise God. Can you hear me? I thought the voice of the archangel was supposed to come first. It already came and they didn't know it. It did what it was supposed to do. Hallelujah. It'll speak again, but that'll be in the resurrection. Amen. You see how late the hour is? The shout, done. Voice of the archangel, accomplish. Amen. And when Jesus was taken up on the Mount of Olives, there was a 10-day connection period. The minister Jesus Christ cut off there. And for 10 days, there was no signs. Then 10 days later, down came the dynamics and it continued on again. We're right in that 10-day slot. God bless you. You may be seated. We've got to find it. Amen. So it's house cleaning time. Sisters, it's time to clean up the way we dress. It's time to get away from the two low fronts. Don't wear low-cut blouses, dresses, jumpers. There's a way to dress beautifully and to look pretty without being sexy. I'm house cleaning. I've started. Hold on. Amen. You don't have to look sexy because that's the world spirit. A demon. But you can look pretty. You should look pretty. Your sister is built that way, Brother Bannon said. But don't be like the world. Amen. Don't show your flesh. Amen. Praise God. Don't dress like that. Brothers, don't look at sexy dressed women. Because they are demons from hell. Stay away. Turn your head. Husbands, you are responsible for your whole house. You're responsible for your whole house. Your wife, your family, your children, everything in there. You're responsible. You're held responsible. Hallelujah. Kick out everything that's wrong. Amen. Lead your whole family the right way. Make changes where they're needed. Do all you can to get the family altar back into your home. Amen. Do all you can. The rest of the family, help, help the husband, help the father to get it there. We've got to get Christ back in our home. The revival, he said, in your homes, in your lives. That's what we're preaching on today. You either take this seriously or God will find somebody who will. The dynamics is going to fall. Amen. It's still the voice word revealing the glory plans. But they have never changed. God never changes his way of doing anything. Justified, sanctified, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Young people, when you see a radio road show, don't you book to that kind of music. Shame on you, praise God. Amen. Be a Christian. Can I carry on? Amen. Go to your fireworks display. You live a life every day of the week. Whether there's servants of God there or whether there's no servants of God there, the recording angel is still there. Amen. This is not your Pentecostal birth. This is adoption. It's on behavior. Hallelujah. Amen. So husbands, get your house in order. Everyone in your home is under you. Hallelujah. Do all you can to help them. I don't mean legalistically. I mean with love, with the Holy Ghost, with understanding. Put Christ in the middle of your homes. Amen. Make sure your tithes and offerings are in order. We're looking for every key for the dynamics to fall. Just do everything right. Don't uh, just avoid all appearance of evil. Even if you're not doing wrong, don't look like you're doing wrong. 
Because if you look like you're doing wrong and it gets busted over the pulpit, that's your fault. It looked like it. So the Bible says avoid appearance of it. I'm not saying that's happened, but it might happen if you look like you're up to no good. Because if I think you're up to no good, what will an unbeliever think? You see, no reproach on Christ now. We're looking for dynamics. Amen. I'm turning up the heat a bit more before I turn it down. Amen. Yes, sir. Seven times hotter. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So just put everything in order. Wives, you reverence your husbands. Amen. You support him while he's trying to get everything in order in the house. You be with, don't resist him. Help him. Reverence him. Don't sass him. Don't fight against him. He's your head. You don't, wanna, you don't hit your head? Well, don't do it in, uh, in your uh, spiritual head. Amen. Love him. Support him. And love your children. You may be seating. Amen. Courting couples. I don't know if there's any here now. Amen. But if you will be courting soon, many of you, amen, live godly in your courtship. Flee fornication. And quit lying. Amen. Young people, flee fornication. Stay away from that dangerous thing which has got all the young people out there today. Except you, the rest of them are full of demons. Amen. It doesn't even bother their conscience. Amen. But you're surrounded by it. You need a special grace to walk through that world. Amen. And not fall the way they go. But there's an anointing upon you. There's an anointing that will keep you in the trial. But be careful. Don't walk in the way. Praise God of the uh, harlot. Stay away from her door. Amen. Her lips drop as a honeycomb. Her feet go down to hell. She'll drag you down with her. Yeah. Amen. These things people will fall. Amen. I'm trying to fortify you today. Yeah. Stay away from the edge of the cliff. Avoid the temptation. Don't go into those places where you get pulled away in the wrong direction. Avoid those situations. But if you find yourself in it, get out of it. Yeah. Don't want to hang around. Get out. Yeah. Just get it. This voice will come back to you at that time. Get out. Yeah. Just make your excuses and go or don't make your excuses but go we want you in that rapture we want you on that rapture express hallelujah you've got to be there the hounds of hell and the daughters of men they all look so beautiful and so handsome and so attractive but their feet go down to hell amen i'm crying out now get away from those areas the devil has done all he can to get it to this place because he remembers thousands of years ago when God first made the world and the sons of God moved out. The daughters of men caused the sons of God to marry them. It worked the first time and God was so angry with them, he destroyed the whole world. Amen. But now you are anointed and vaccinated against it. Amen. Satan can try all he wants to. Amen. But he's not going to do it again. Because this time there's going to be a rapture. This time there's going to be a resurrection. So young people, I'm crying out now because the time of the dynamics is here. Amen. Don't give the devil a chance. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Set your tent towards Hebron. And build an altar unto God like Abraham did. Separate from the world. The dynamics are coming. And now here's one I want you to get. So you may be seated. I want to burn this in. And when those that aren't here, I'm going to say it again. So that burns into them too. Amen. Why are people so tossed about? No matter what it is, if a man is not as good as his word, you can't trust him. Because he's no good. See, there's one thing that a person must always be that's honest. Tell things so that you can go back and tell it a million times. It'll be the same thing. You see, just be honest. No matter if it's bad or whether it's good, be honest. And if it's against you, say it anyhow. Or keep still, don't say it at all. See, 
So then I feel that way, that God will bless an honest heart. And knowing the position that I stand in to defeat sickness and stuff for people and prayer to the Lord Jesus according to his divine word and his calling, that I must be honest in heart to do that. The devil knows whether you are or not, see? He won't pay no attention. I don't care how loud you holler or how much you make up. He won't pay no attention to it, see? That's right, but God will if you're honest. And there's some people in here with a lying spirit on them. They don't just don't present it truth every time. They say it this way, and it's not quite that way. But they're trying to protect their own hide, their own skins. Amen. Amen. I'm calling you today. I'm warning you, don't do that anymore. Yeah. That's a spirit on you. And that's where young children, I had something to tell you. That as you grow up, Satan will tempt you to lie. Amen. He'll tempt you to tell something that's not true. Don't you listen to him. You parents, if you see your children lie, you let them have it. You rebuke them so hard until they're in tears. Amen. Don't let them get that spirit on them from a young age because it will grow up in them. Amen. Lying spirit. Now, you think the dynamics will fall on a church with some lying spirits in there? No. Amen. I'm saying because there were some lying spirits in my office. And I'm not going to let anything like that be in this church. You either repent and get that spirit off you, amen, or, or you get out yourself. Yeah. This church has got one vision right now, is dynamics. Yeah. One purpose is to die out a revival, to get Christ in our midst, and there's no room for any lying spirits. Yeah. So if I catch anybody lying, it'll be name-calling time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now lying is more dangerous than you realize, because it was the lies that Ananias and Sapphira did that packed them out. They were lying spirits. Amen. We want real Christians now. Yes, sir. Well, I feel an amen come back from the church. Praise his holy name. God bless you. You're fighting with me. We've got one enemy. That's Satan. And all the legions of demons. But we're against him together. Amen. Let me read it back to you. You may be seated from Acts 5. I've nearly finished. And amen, you musicians, you can come up to get ready. Amen. Acts 5. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession. See, they were in the church. But they didn't have the Holy Ghost because they didn't know that charity was on the throne. They didn't have the token to examine the token. So they thought they were dealing with Peter. And you come in the office, you think you're dealing with a man. But I've tried to teach you, as Brother Jimmy said, on that fact at the beginning, respect. You've got to have it now. For your own safety. You're not dealing with man in church. You're dealing with God. Jesus says, whatever they do to you, they do to me. If they lie to you, they lie to me. Amen. That's why it's so dangerous. Now, in this season, charity is not on my heart. I have a birth, but not charity the person. So, therefore, it can be forgiven. But maybe in a short time when dynamics comes, it, it, amen, it, there'll be some more work for the ushers to do. Yeah. Yeah. Hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's look what happened the first time to prevent it happening again. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Ananias and Sapphira sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. You see, what they did though, they lied. They said, we sold it for this amount. You see, fine if they told the truth or what if they needed it, but they lied. They said, this is what we sold it for. And they sold it for more. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not, in thine, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast, thou res why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours later, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. 
And she said, yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried your husband are at the door and shall carry thee away. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Amen. Beloved church, we are coming back to that. We're coming back to another book of Acts to where God himself is in the church. Amen. So don't lie anymore. If you've been doing it up until now, and I can smell it, I've got a pastor's nose. Amen. You talk to me, praise God, you're lying. I won't tell you to your face until I can nail you with it and prove it to you. And bust that spirit. But I can still smell it. So speak the truth at all times. Just, just say it. Because the Holy Spirit will bring it back to me somehow what it was. And he's done so. And that's why I'm preaching this way. Amen. So you're not dealing with man. This is church. This is the house of God. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. And you are the anointed of the Lord. Praise God. So this is a serious time. And the fear of the Lord fell on all of them. And I pray God the fear of God will fill every heart. That we're afraid to do wrong. That'll keep you away from temptation. Because the dynamics is knocking on the door. Amen. I know in your work as well. Your husbands and those of you that work. Don't pull any fast deals. Don't, don't be crooked in your, any of your dealings. Be a Christian wherever you are. At all times. Be honest. It's house cleaning. Now I started here. But this house cleaning must continue. From here until we find that coin. Every one of our homes, every one of our houses, our prayer lives and everything. This is a serious time for us to gain the, the promised land of the dynamics. On your computers, be a Christian. Amen. Sanctify your RAM. Sanctify your hard disks. Amen. Sanctify your hearts. Be careful where you surf. There are sharks in those waters. Amen. They'll kill you, praise God. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost swept the television out of the home, and now the devil's trying to put it back through the back door on the internet. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Don't you get tempted to the prostitute's sight. Amen. Her feet go down to hell. Stay away from all those things. Amen. The Bible says a fool strays therein. So, brother, I'm trying to exhort you, and anything I can find from here on out, I'll be preaching to keep us away. Amen. And one last thing. Don't come in here with unconfessed sin. Now I'm going to burn that one in before we finish. Don't come in the house of God with unconfessed sin. We're all human. We all make mistakes. Amen. But it's unconfessed sin that God hates. Amen. If you made a mistake, confess it. Don't hide it. Don't cover it up. It could cause the whole church to fail. You want me to prove it? I'll prove it. Ephesians, Paral Joshua. And there's where the church is failing today on that walk. That's why I'm preaching that walk. That's where the church is failing. Do you know that even your own behavior can knock somebody else out of getting healed? So there's the minister praying for somebody to be healed over here. And they've done right. The person's got faith. And they would be healed. But there's somebody in here with unconfessed sin. And that demon sits there. Because this quote is true. That's what we're against now. Unconfessed sin. May the Holy Ghost rake through and search every heart. If you've got unconfessed sin in here, don't you dare come to this Lord's Supper table tonight. It's bad enough to be in church with unconfessed sin, but you come and take the Lord's Supper with unconfessed sin, you're in danger. But the Bible says people sleep because of that. That means they die. They leave this dimension. Amen. We're talking about church now. Yes, we're going to find out who's Christians. It's really going to go on. I'm believing it's all of you. But we want to clean out now and just rake through and see if there's anything hiding that should not be in the camp. 
Now, not only does it, can it stop you getting healed, but your misbehavior of unconfessed sins, see, that's misbehaving. You sin, that's misbehaving. But then if you don't confess it, that's real misbehavior. Of unconfessed sins of you believers, he's not talking about sinners, of believers can cause this church to bitterly fail. And at the day of judgment, you'll be responsible for every bit of it. Amen. Oh, you say, now wait a minute, Brother Branham. Well, that's the truth. Think of it. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 So I plead with you today, before the Holy Spirit gets a hold of your unconfessed sin Amen. and pulls it out, that you confess it. We want a clean church because we've got to get that thread out the way for the baptism of the Holy Ghost to strike in here. Amen. 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 Brother Devon had a dream way back in July 1998, 11th of July, was when he wrote the testimony here. And I've been waiting and watching and when to read it. And so finally I pulled it out today and I want you to understand this dream. God bless you, Brother Blewett. This is Brother Devon writing to tell you about the dream I mentioned to you. On Tuesday, the 23rd of June, at about 5.30 a.m., I woke up, then put my head back down and that is when I started dreaming. I dreamt that the Lord came and everybody knew that the rapture was on and started to put things in order. See why I'm reading it now? You know this is the rapture. And now we're starting. The Lord was dressed in a white coat like a doctor or a surgeon. He was standing by an operating table. In the dream, everybody knew that no one could make the rapture except his or her heart is examined by the Lord himself. He will put a seal around it that could never be broken by anyone. Amen. Everyone that was sealed was put to one side to be raptured. Everyone whose heart was not right was sent back to make things right. There was a long queue of people waiting to be examined by the Lord. When it was my turn, he picked me up like a baby and laid me down on the table put his hand in my chest and took out my heart, opened it and checked it. Then he looked at me and shook his head and said to me, you are not ready. I can't seal it. Go and put things right. Then he put my heart back in and I went and put things right. I then joined the queue later on. He carries on examining other people's hearts. Sometime later while he was checking every heart, he saw me in the line and pointed to me and said, don't even come back yet. Your heart is still not right. Then I woke up, praising the Lord, knowing that he is still dealing with me. Please pray for me, Brother Devon. That's a powerful dream. Amen. Every one of us has got to go on that operating table. Amen, Brother Devon. God bless you for your honesty to, to write that out. Yes, sir. Where would you stand? Before you even got to that table, would there be things that you know you wouldn't pass the test? Amen. Amen, that he'd have to send you back? Or is the heart in condition to be sealed? And once it's sealed, it's put away to be raptured. But the, Jesus was checking the hearts and seeing if there's anything, and then saying, no, go and put it right. Amen. Now, what about our hearts? Amen. May we all pray and see if there's anything that we know needs putting right. Something's been nagging in the back of our heart for years. We've got to put everything right now. It's the Lord's Supper, it's communion. Maybe we can start to play something. <clears throat> I surrender all. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Brother Devon said, please pray for me. We want to pray for every one of us in here. I'll use Brother Branham's prayer in letting off the pressure. Lord Jesus, we are human beings, Lord. We are ready to confess our sins. I'm confessing the sins of this people. I'm confessing my own sins. We have disbelieved too much, Lord. The hours are growing dark. The Son of God is soon to arrive. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll forgive our sins, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit will now take every unbelief away from us. Oh, if he could only get into our hearts, there would be another day of Pentecost. There would be such a condition in this church and this group of people tonight that it, until it would be noised abroad all around the country by morning. Holy Spirit, 
break every barrier of sin may it come through like the jet plane beyond the sin barrier and shake every shackle of unbelief may every eagle beat his head against the rock of ages until the Holy Ghost takes complete control Satan you are lost you've lost the battle and in the name of Jesus Christ leave this audience come out of them for the glory of God oh Jesus Lord I express Lord a burden on my heart this afternoon to your children Lord Jesus we've had such a wonderful time as a church oh God we've had times and shouting times weeping times Lord scouring times Father God we've seen people Lord look like they're gonna slip away and the power of God came and snatched them back in we've seen your hand over and over and over again dear Jesus we cannot tell you how much we love you Lord but tonight dear Jesus we want to love you more oh father forgive us Lord I got my hand raised Lord Jesus I failed you so many times Lord oh God if there's a failure in this church it's got to be me and I'm sorry tonight Lord for the way dear God I've let you down I'm sorry father for the hours Lord that I haven't used the way I should have done father God for every opportunity I missed for every transgression I've committed, Lord, forgive this unworthy wretch, dear God. And Lord, I believe many of us in here feel the same way tonight. We haven't been the way we should be, Lord. Lord, we need your help tonight, Jesus. God, we need your grace upon our church, oh God. We are human beings, Lord. Amen. We are weak, but you're strong, Lord Jesus. God, tonight I pray, Father, may you reveal what that thread is. Oh, God, that last thing to get out of the way so that the Holy Spirit can pour down into this church in such a baptism of the Holy Ghost. I pray today, Lord, amen, that the anointing from this message will be upon every person. Amen, Lord. Not depressed and down and weary, certainly not. Amen. This will lead us to the great victory in the love divine. Oh God, may we rededicate tonight though, Father. Amen. Lord, may we realize, dear Jesus, the hour is late. And we cannot be desperate unless you speak to us, Lord. But I pray tonight that your voice has spoken to hearts. That still small voice, Lord. As Brother Bram preached about Elijah. Amen. He'd run before Jezebel. And then he got himself into a cave. That third place was in a cave. And Brother Bam said, when a man gets a hold of God, the first thing he goes in a church, amen, is to bring it from worldliness to holiness. He brings it from death unto life. It's born again. It's new. Its ideas are new. What we need is a revival like that today. It really is true. Oh, we've had a dip of the Spirit. We've had spiritual blessings and spiritual uprisings. But we don't need that no more. We need a revival of the Spirit of the living God in our hearts. We don't need so much of the dips of the Spirit or spiritual awakening. We need a revival. Amen. Not a spiritual awakening. Sometimes that causes mixed multitudes. But we need a revival that will sit down and shake down and will cut out all the things. Amen. And he speaks about the Lake Michigan there where it washed all the trash up out onto the banks. That's what the church needs is a revival to shake from it all the worldliness and the things of the world and to bring back the purity and holiness of God in the hearts of its believers humility that's my prayer Father Lord it's not so easy to preach this kind of message Father but I pray oh God we'll see the fruits of it now give power to all our young people Lord to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy to avoid those places dear God where the enemy's stronghold is to beware Lord God those lips that seduce Amen. Those eyes. Amen. That flap. Amen. And bat and lure the young people away. Satan veil behind those skins. God, give them grace tonight, Lord. Shake away the world, Father. Brother Brandon cried out, Lord, at the end of perfect strength by perfect weakness. Oh, God, if it be your will, Lord, just before that church is raptured, may there rise power. Oh God, fill these vessels. Raise them up, Lord, he said, and shake this world once more. Oh God, take your church then, Lord. Leave the world in its condition. 
she stumbles oh father may every one of us in our hearts make it an altar right now Lord of surrender as brother Chapman comes to song lead may we rededicate look at places dear God which is wrong in our lives and surrender it tonight Lord and give it back to you father oh God will you grant it Lord bless your precious children in Jesus Christ's name all to Jesus all to Jesus I surrender all to thee I freely give to thee I free I will ever love and trust him I will ever and trust him in his presence daily live now's the time I surrender all let go of the world let go of sin those things you know you've been doing that have not been right cut it off tonight Jesus sent you back off the operating table go and make it right then come back again he wants to seal you more than you even thirst for the Holy Ghost he wants to seal you oh Jesus ah. all to Jesus I surrender
my precious Savior, I surrender all, oh, all to Jesus, I surrender now, I feel all the The joy of full salvation, glory, glory to His name. Oh, I surrender all. Oh, I. Ah! Uh -huh.